I would play with a chip on my shoulder. Just even even if schools didn't doubt me, I feel like they did. I still I just have in my mind like, yeah, you no, know, I just this for everybody that doubted me, just just things like that. So I definitely play with a chip on my shoulder every time. I go I go out at practice. You know, I practice every day like it's a game, and I go in every game like it's a championship. You know, so I just I just make sure whatever I got going on in my head off the field in the games like don't let it affect me. Because so, when I go out on the field, I, I plan for something. I'm just not playing like just to say, oh, I got a touchdown, oh, I got a, you know, I'm playing for the win too. But I'm, I'm also playing for just life, you know. Yeah. So like, I, my life depend on everything. My life depend on this. Basically, what I'm saying. So you came here in the transfer portal. Mm -hmm. You were at Texas A&M Commerce. Yep. Where's that? It's like an hour. It's in East Texas, so it's like an hour from Dallas. It ain't that far. It ain't. It's not that far from where I stayed. Uh, so it's like about an hour from Dallas. I'm trying to see where else it's by, cause it ain't by nothing really. It's just in the middle of nowhere. You got McDonald's. You got Domino's. You got a Brahms. Sonic, and that's about it. What's what's that? So not a big town, but you're an hour away from. Yeah, yeah, away yeah. from Dallas. You're, yeah, maybe less than an hour away from an In-N-Out burger. In Dallas. I can't eat In-N-Out. Yeah. Nah. Too healthy for that. Nah, it was just too boosted when I first ate it. Yeah. When I when they because they opened it like in Dallas or like in the Soto area where I'm from, so when I got there, I was gonna eat it. I ate one time and I was like, nah. It ain't worth the it ain't worth the wait. So you went to Texas A and M Commerce as a freshman. You were there three mm -hmm. years, and and small campus. Yeah, small campus. Playing. It's not. It's, it's kind of small campus. Yeah. 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 I try to give it some leeway, but nah, it's <laughs> like, kind of small. <laughs> People that are great though. What conference do they play in? So when we was D, when we was Division Two, which was the first two years. No, first three years. Oh, I was there four years. So my freshman year, I redshirted. The year after that, my sophomore year, COVID. And the third year was my junior year in college, but I was a freshman on the field. So I played that year. And then last year was my senior Yeah, my senior year. So, But I was a sophomore on the field. So now I'm a junior on the field, but I'm a like, senior in the classroom type. So, But, man, it's different. Yeah, it's different there, man. I was, I'm trying to like. Have you watched like, Last Chance You? Yeah, I watched Last Chance. Was it anything like oh, Last no. Chance You? It wasn't, it wasn't, like it wasn't that bad. College. It wasn't that bad. It was. We got we got some good stuff there. We had like some good facilities. You got a brand yeah. new locker room. Like locker room stuff was locker room was nice. Weight room pretty good. You know, we had we had we had some up up type facilities. Now while I was there. Interesting journey for for you to go there, come here, mm -hmm. play like you're playing. Uh, be be a, a go-to guy. Did you did you think that was gonna happen when you got here? Yeah, I feel like I feel like you know, just because I played like in the in the last conference, which was like I said, the first year we was uh, in the LSC. Second year we ended up joining the Southland, which was last year. And I played you know against a lot of D1 opponents the whole year, and I did pretty good. So I was like you know, I don't feel like going up. I mean the competition. Of course everybody's gonna be better. You know. Yeah. When I'm going, going into the SEC. But I feel like if I just like play my game and don't go out there nervousness, because I, I have in my mind every game like you know the other person in front of me wake up just like me, he put his socks on, his pads on just like me. So I just I just go out there and play my game. There's no reason for me to be nervous because he trying to yeah. his mom here to watch him, my mom here to watch me. I don't want my mom to be like so. I gotta you know you gotta go to him. So that's a great way to look at it. Yeah. Well, you were the first 1,000 yard receiver at Texas A&M Commerce since 2014. Mm. Texas A&M Commerce, they need to get to midfield at the 50. Pressure on Dinkelman, unloads, downfield, pass is caught. We're on the 30-yard line, and that is Andrew Armstrong. I think sometimes we get, we all get caught up on what somebody's reputation is mm -hmm. or what their recruiting status was. You know, and now, you know, again, it's early. When we're taping this podcast, it's early in the season. But people are watching Colorado, and they're seeing people play that they have not heard of before. Mm -hmm. A lot of players. Yeah. You know, and I think it shows you some that that everybody's got to fight through that in your world, though, and mm -hmm. recruiting and, and getting people's attention, right? Like, you didn't get really recruited out of high school. At all. 
at all. Were you good in high school? I was I was I was okay. Like, you know, I was I was I was small though. Like I was so real small. So you grown yeah, since grown. you've been at A and M Commerce? Like body wise, I probably grew like probably an inch. Probably an inch taller. Probably an inch taller. Stronger. Way stronger. Way stronger. When I got in college, I was like one sixty five, like six two, six six two. Bro, you yeah. have to run around in the shower to get wet. You were, mm. you were skinny. <laughs> no. <Nah. laughs> Water hit me, so I just as soon as I got in there, I was wet, you know. But I was. I was real small. I was like 165 coming into coming into college, six two like 165. So I gained a lot of weight. I gained like from there from my first year there to my, which was last year. I think I had gained like 14 pounds. And then since I've been here already, I didn't gain 14 pounds, 13, 14 pounds. So. So what are you right now? Uh, like 200. I'm right at 200. Six two. Like 200 in between 200 to 205. Yeah. Oh, my height six yeah. three. Six, six three. three. Yeah, six three two hundred five something like that. So so maybe you weren't as good yeah. coming out of high school, but. You were having, you weren't getting a lot of offers. Yeah. Um, so you went to Texas A&M Commerce. How did, how, what was that process like? You get a scholarship. How, how does that work? Well, Commerce, I had like last year I was on a, a full, but before that I was on like partials. All my years mm -hmm. I was on partials and stuff like that. So that's really like, you know, I, I just said I'm gonna just take this journey. This is the journey I was gonna take, you know. So. I was, I didn't have I didn't have the the ability to go big and just go full ride first off. So. I knew like I knew I knew what type of player I was. I knew I was good yeah. enough to go, you know, to to a bigger school. But you know, my journey just took me. It took a long. It took longer for me, you know. So that's just that's just where I'm at right now with it. You know, it's taking long. It's taking long for me, and everything is coming in to fruition to how how I wanted it, how how I wanted it to be. So. So you must have loved football. Oh yeah. You I really love football. loved football. I really love football. Like, like you that. just like wherever I can go and keep playing football, I'll do that. Definitely. Not hey, I didn't get. The offer I wanted, mm -hmm. I was and so I'm gonna quit. Oh no, there ain't no quitting. I didn't work too. I didn't work. I've been playing football since I was six, seven, probably right. probably before that. So like, it was just you just that's just football is life at that point. Like I, all I did play football. So I played a little bit of basketball. I was pretty good at it. You know, I probably averaged like 45 points per game. But other than that, that was, was pretty good. Where'd you grow up? Desoto, Texas. How far is that from commerce? Yeah, about an hour, about an hour or twenty. So you're playing. You you've been playing since you were six. Yeah, I've been playing. Were you six. good in youth football? Oh yeah, I was good in youth football, real good. I probably they had like a hall of fame in a little football area we was in. I'd probably be in it. Yeah. Yeah, for real. What was that travel? Uh, no, it was just, just in the Soto area. Like a lot just of like a lot of people came out of the area. Like that y'all don't know probably like a lot of people, like the Soto, just that area. Period. Like Von Miller came out of the Soto. So it was serious. Yeah, it was serious down. There. It was serious. It was serious. You play on Saturdays? Yeah, Saturdays, Saturday mornings. And then Everybody, you get it was then... packed. These be packed like every weekend. It's like what is that Friday night tikes? Is that the no. show? Have you seen that? Yeah, I seen that show before. But I feel like if they would have came down there to the Soto. It would, they would have got beat. <laughs> like, it would have got bad. That's great. It was a lot. It was a lot. We had a lot of talent down there. Like a lot of talent. So, what position were you playing? I played quarterback. I was quarterback all my my youth. And you started playing school ball in junior high. Uh, yeah, in junior high I started playing. Uh, I think I was playing receiver and quarterback, but I was mostly playing receiver. Then my freshman year of high school, I was at quarterback. But then I, before the season started, I went to receiver, and then from now I was just at receiver for the rest. Where'd you go to high school? Desoto. Okay. I went to Desoto, and then my junior year I went to Bishop Dunn. It's a big name school. Yeah. Were you starting? Were you playing a lot? Were you a dude? <clears throat> so, and I think this is another thing that I got to do in my recruiting too, coming out of high school, because my junior year, I played a little bit. I didn't play as much though. But my, my senior year was the really first year I actually played high school football, like on, on varsity. So it was like, you know, I'm kind of in that late, in that late cycle, schools already offered everybody. Like they already got people who they wanted to come in and things like that. So I think that was another reason. I probably didn't get the offers I wanted and things like that, but. I mean, were you were you doing all the things like putting out a recruiting tape? Were you doing all that, or were you mm -hmm. just? Yeah, I had my huddle. I had my huddle and yeah. thing uh, made. But was anybody talking to you, looking at you? Uh, I was talking to a couple couple of big schools. Some schools wanted me to go JUCO, but I wasn't doing it. Like just to develop more? Yeah, but I, I just didn't feel Why like. Why didn't I, you want to do that? I don't know. I just feel like commerce. You know, I feel like the NFL. 
find you anywhere you at. So I was like, no, I'm not finna go to Juke. I'm just gonna go there. Like I'm gonna go to somebody that actually gave me a chance. So and that was my first, that was my first offer too. Texas and Combs was my first offer I ever got. So I just ended up going there. First down now for the 22. Oh, that pass is caught. Yes, it was. Is that? Uh, yeah, that's Armstrong. That's Armstrong. Again. Just a little trivia question for for somebody to be able to use later. You know, when when you show out again and they're like, yeah, that guy went to Texas A&M Commerce. He was at Texas A&M Commerce a year ago. Yeah. Do you know the name of their mascot? Pause. What is it? Lion. It's a lion. A lion. So you were the Texas A&M, A&M Commerce, Commerce Lions. Lions. Yep. Somebody's going to use that in a trivia question. Yep, that was definitely our that was definitely our mascot. Lucky the lion. So, so you just kind of got like, well, first of all, it didn't start great, right? Because mm. of COVID. So your season got can't like you didn't even get to Cancel, play. So we just straight worked out, worked out. That might have actually straight. helped you. It did a little bit, and then COVID came, and then the year we came back, I missed like two three games because of COVID. I had got COVID, but I wasn't sick. I was never sick. They just gave us a test and they said I had COVID. Pulled me out of practice. I was like. That's a bummer. Man. So we, I missed the biggest game of that season, that game, that week. And then last year you played 11 games. Well, you, you, so your, your redshirt junior year, mm-hmm. um, you, had a, you had a great year. You had that 1,000 yard receiving year. But the year prior to that, like after COVID, right? Mm-hmm. You had, you only had 297 yards receiving, 15 yeah. catches. Yeah. So you, you like took a major jump. Yeah, I had the year before that, like the year after COVID, I had like two seniors in front of me. So I had, it was a senior, his name was Chance, and I had another senior named Matt. They both was in front of me. They was pretty good. But, you know, I was still a young guy, and they were seniors. It was their last year, so, you know, they weren't probably going to take them out the field. So I just had, I was just saying, okay, I'm just wait till next year. Because I already knew next year I was going to be probably that guy, the guy for the team, things like that. So I just waited and. I'm just fascinated that, like, we're, we don't live in a patient world. I mean, were you not, the fact that you've hung around and you've stuck around and things are got, have gotten better for you. I mean, it, God forbid your career end mm-hmm. today. It was like, you did what you wanted to, like, you proved it. Like, you made it, you got here, you scored some dust. I mean, yeah. in, a, in a SEC program. But coming out of high school, it didn't feel like that. Yeah, I didn't, I like, like I tell myself, I was like, Who'd have, who'd have thought like three years ago I would have been here? Like a lot of people probably would have thought I still would have been at Commerce or like probably been done, you know? And I think another thing that helped me, like even just playing hard, I had a lot of friends there, like that I grew up with, you know? So I had like um, five five to six friends that I grew up with that actually ended up going to Commerce with me. My freshman year, uh, sophomore year, last year, you know, they all was there, so that really helped me too. That really helped me like leave, because I wasn't gonna leave and they was like, bro, you know you better than this. You know you better, you know. So I was like, you right, yeah, right. So and we get in the portal. So <clears throat> you stuck with it, you know, and in a, a lot of today's world, man, it's just like if I don't have it now, I'm going to go do something else. Mm-hmm. Um, was it hard to stick with it? You know, you talked about a minute ago, like how hard you had worked and all that. So what, what's been going on in there and in here, like that's just driven you over these last four years? It's really just I had like, this is my plan A. And I feel like I don't have a plan B, so my plan A, like, I feel like if I had a plan B, I wouldn't try as hard as my plan A, because I know I had something to fall back on. Hmm. So me having my plan A right now, you know, of course I have something in my mind, like if something don't work out, of course, but like, I don't fo- I don't think about that at all. I just go as it's, I don't have a plan B. So with me having a plan A, it's just like, that's what I gotta do, you know? I gotta, I, I want that, I, I want it real bad, so. That's, that's, how, that's how it's going. There's a lot of wisdom in that. Yeah. You think more people would be successful at things if they didn't have a plan B? Like just what they want to work at and go after mm-hmm. and achieve? I feel like I feel like it's all in your mind. So like even if even if I'm saying like I could be saying, Oh, I don't have a plan A or I don't have a plan B but like I don't like you could still not care that much about your plan A. See me I I I've been caring about my plan plan A since I came out the womb. <laughs> at this yeah. point, so like my plan A has been stuck with me forever. Well, and, and what's the big ultimate plan A goal? Like, what do you mean? Like, what? Like, at your youngest age, football was important to you. And what was the what was the pinnacle of that goal? The pinnacle of that goal was just being able to support my my my, my family. You know, my friends. Make sure it's just generational. Just gen- make make what be wealthy for my generations. 
like my kids, kids, kids. Like so playing like the that. NFL. Playing the NFL, of course. And be able to. But not just that, just being like, because I want to be a father too, like one day. So just being, just being like, my main goal is just to be a, be a good human, you know, just be mm, like, yeah. be a, be a good human, and just, and just, you know, put put everything into put everything into perspective. I don't try to take life too serious. I just try to just live, cause. Man, it'd it be some times, like, of course, it's been some times where I just sit there and just be like, man, I don't know, like, like, doubt, a little doubt creep in. But then I got to tell myself again, like, you know, this is what, this what I really want. This is what I work for. You know, it's a lot of people that get offered at a high school and may not even, you know, and there's a lot of people, you hear about a lot of people, you know, that's, that, that, that didn't get recruited highly, that go drafted first round, probably went JUCO, things like that. So it's just like the journey I'm taking is just, that's all it is, just a deep breath, deep breath in, deep breath out. Well, I mean, it's, it's relatable. Sometimes it's not relatable yeah. for the person that was just, you know, we don't really know. It was just boom, they were they were always five star and they were always, you know. Yeah. I mean, like think about Bryce Harper and the major in the majors, you know, he was on the cover of Sports Illustrated back when that was a big deal yeah. when he was like 16 years old. They were always there, right? I don't even know how to be able then, to handle that. But, right, we, you don't know how to be a front runner, do you? Mm -hmm. no. What's it like to not? What's it like to be? Would you call yourself an underdog? How, how, how like a chip on your shoulder? Yeah, like I prove something. A, I would play with a chip on my shoulder. Just even even if schools didn't doubt me, I feel like they did. I still I just have in my mind like, yeah, no, I just this for everybody that doubted me, just just things like that. So. I definitely play with the chip on my shoulder every time. Go, I go out at practice. You know, I practice every day like it's a game, and I go in every game like it's a championship. You know, so I just, I just make sure whatever I got going on in my head, off the field, in the games, like don't let it affect me. So cause when I go out on the field, I, I plan for something. I'm just not playing like just to say, oh, I got a touchdown, or oh, I got a, you know, I'm playing for the win too. But I'm, I'm also playing for just life. You know, yeah. so like I, my life depend on everything. My life depend on this. Basically, what I'm saying. Tell me more about how you grew up and just your surroundings. Oh, my my surroundings. I grew up, I grew up with my mom, and my dad. Yeah. They both they both uh they both was with me and my brother. I have two brothers. Okay. I also got a sister and another brother. They live uh, one lives in Kansas, uh, St. Louis, Missouri. Another my older brother, he lives in um Alabama. And I got a little brother. He plays. He a coach right now. Okay. He coaches at Hutchinson Community College. Yeah. And my older brother lives uh, in DeSoto as well. But, you know, growing up, we had fun. You know, I, you don't see now kids don't go outside no more. So back then when we was, when we was younger, you know, we I feel old, Sam, back when I was younger. Yeah, you're 23. <laughs> yeah, I feel old. Are, are you 23 now or almost? No, I'm 22 right now. I'm going to be 23. almost 23. Yeah. I'm almost 23. Either way. <laughs> but, yeah, I feel, you know. You didn't we, sit inside and play games? Oh, no. Nah, we, 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 but that's at nighttime. Like, after we yeah. didn't went outside, be tired. But we go outside. We just go outside, play basketball. You know, it was it wasn't a lot of trouble around. You know, we used to get in trouble, of course, but it wasn't like just, just bad, bad. You know. Yeah. So, yeah, my my growing up was pretty good actually. It wasn't it wasn't bad at all. Who, who's your support system? You know, on this journey with you once you went to A and M Commerce and and now you're in Arkansas. And you know, my mom, my dad, my family, my friends, my girlfriend. You know, just everybody. Everybody around me, you know, they just making sure that I'm, that I'm keeping my head on straight, that I'm focused. And sometimes they tell me a little bit too much. And I'll be like, all right, I understand. I know what I'm doing. Like, you know, I got to tell them sometimes. Like, I know, they, they, but they just still try to put it in my head, like, because they know, they know what I can do. Like, they know where, the, where I'm at in this position I'm at. So I just let them, I just let them keep, keep, keep motivating me. Jefferson fakes, rolls left, looks into the end zone, got a man open there on the sideline, complete touchdown, Arkansas. Andrew Armstrong, nine yards and a score. Tell me about your game. What kind of receiver are you? I, mean, I just, I just go out there and play. You know, I just, I watch a lot of video. A lot, a lot of people ask me like, do you work on? Do you work on like? Because sometimes I go out there and just do some extra stuff and they never seen before. I'd be like, they be like, do you have you worked on that? Like, do you? I'd be like, no, nah, I just, I'm more of a, I'm more of a. A looker learner, a visual, a visual learner. Yeah. I said looker, <laughs> yeah. a visual learner. Like, I, I, it's easier for me to just look at it and then go out there and do it instead of me like steady trying to work on, steady trying to do it. Like, it just when I see it, it just pop in my mind. So, I, 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 like when I go out on the field, like I said, I just 
reactive players. I just react to zones. So it's like it's like it's to a point to where like nothing they can do is gonna be right. Cause I I can like I can run a route inside, outside, no matter what route I got. So if they go in, I'm gonna just go out. If they go out, I'm gonna just go in. So it's just that's I think like that's a that's a big building block like of the, the type of receiver I've came. In the gun, KJ bad snap, balls on the ground. Jefferson picks it up, rolling right, got a man, touchdown, Arkansas! Armstrong in the back of the end zone. How you feel like your chemistry is with KJ having gotten here in January? I haven't been here that long. Yeah, I feel like I feel like it's good just for the couple of months that, that yeah. I've been here. You know, I feel like I feel like our chemistry is great. You know, throwing the ball, throwing, throwing kitchen, you know, even when the defender's on me, the way he throws, it's just like I just I just treat it like wrestling, like it's wrestling there. Like when I'm in a game catching the ball, I just don't I'm gonna get hit anyway. So I just think about just wrestling there catching the ball. And if I don't get hit, cutting up. So he yeah, our, our chemistry's been been good so far. You have a favorite play so far? A play? Yeah, not a play call, but just like something that's happened. Uh probably my first touchdown, my favorite my favorite play so far. Second down and seven for the Razorbacks. Jefferson in the gun to throw. Sacks, fires over the middle. Touchdown, Arkansas. Touchdown, Arkansas. Armstrong with his first Razorback score. When I just ran a post inside, that was probably my favorite so far, just seeing the crowd. Like, I ain't playing the crowd that big ever in my life. Yeah, what were the crowds, what were the crowds like at, at Commerce? It was, what were the Lions crowds like? It was it was it was okay. Like it wasn't just like it was never just like packed packed out. Was it like high school like size, like three nah, four thousand. High, high school high school crowds bigger than that. Yeah, yeah. In especially Texas. especially yeah, especially yeah. in Texas. Yeah, but it was it was it was okay. It was okay size, like especially for homecoming games. It was pretty good. Not like this. No, nah, nowhere near this. Nowhere near this at all. It's only getting bigger, man. I'm like, I already know. <laughs> Oh, uh, you know, I'm waiting what, for this Saturday. What do you feel? What, what's that excitement? What do you, what do you see? I try not to yeah. focus so much. Yeah. I try not to focus so much on the crowd. Except, except like you make a big play, you're going to hear it. So it's like you can't not focus on it. So, But I feel like I, I love the crowd. I love the crowd. What are the biggest differences between playing at a, a school like Commerce mm. and, you know, like a D2 level to a – an SEC caliber program. Really just like the atmosphere, like you said, the fans, the atmosphere. Facilities, the comp competition. Facility, oh yeah, yeah, definitely facilities, competition. You know, like I said, it's great players, it's great players everywhere. Yeah. In the SEC, everybody's great. Mm -hmm. Like on, in the FCS, you got a couple good, great players on the team, things like that, but in the SEC, like everybody is great that you're gonna go against. So it's just like, you gotta make sure you, you as, as close as to perfection in your in your play and your abilities as much as you can because any any bad thing you do, like the other person's gonna pick up on it and try to, you know, use it to their advantage. Would you say you have confidence? Oh yeah, I have like a, a high lot. level of confidence. I have a high level of confidence in myself. Where, did, where does it come from? Just my family having confidence in me as well, you know. Um I just I just I just always been a very confident person. Just just knowing like my confidence really built up more last year. Cause the, the journey I went on, that I had that year, so my, my confidence really went up. Cause I was like, I really been just grind, grinding. Like I really just been grinding. So my confidence is, is extremely. It's a it's at a it's at a very high point right now. What would you say about your work ethic? How would you rate your yourself there? I rate myself as up there as high as I can. Cause yeah. I I work on my game, you know, in the weight room, on the field, at practice. You know, I just. I just make sure whatever I can do whatever I can do to make the game easier for me. So, yeah, I feel like my work is pretty, pretty high. Let's go back to when you're playing. What, what gives you an advantage over a DB in your mind? I just feel like, like whatever I do, they can't be right. So that even if they think they're right, I don't I like try to make it feel like they're not right. You know, like, it's just, it's just a lot I do. It's just a lot I try to do. Yeah out there on the field, even when I know I'm not getting the ball, just to mess with them, just to see, like, you know, so. You just love the game, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I just love, I just love, I just have fun out there. Just That's fun. fun. That's great, it should be that way. Yeah. Football's hard. It is, but when you're having fun, it makes the hard just little, get, a little, get a little farther away from yeah. you. It just get more easier and then 
things start when, when you have I feel like when you have fun playing football, things happen. Like a lot of great things can happen playing playing football and having fun with it. Do you have any conversations with the defense while you're out there? Like with, with other teams? Yeah. I don't talk on I don't talk. talk. I don't trash talk. I don't trash talk. A lot of people think I do, but I don't. I when they like when DBs talk trash to me, I probably just be like, all right. And just go back and I just I just let my game talk. I don't talk yeah. trash. Like and that'd be the best. That, it's best when they talk trash and you don't say nothing to them, and then you just go out there and do what you do. Well, they put this work in, and yet they're, they're getting exactly. nothing back. They put all this yelling and all this, <laughs> all this talking back. Y'all, they over there getting tired from talking. But it's hard. It's hard to do that. What was the hardest part about moving here? Was it actually moving, like taking your stuff and putting it in a, a new nah, place? No, nah, it was that, just the change. It's just the change. Just like the workouts. And just, just being in a new environment, that was that was the main, that was the hardest thing about moving, like coming coming to Arkansas for real. So you got, you know, ten games left in the regular season to make your mark, right? Yeah. You thought about that? No, nah, I just think about I just think about what I got to do this week. Yeah, <laughs> I don't that's even, good. I don't even think about next week, the week after that. I just think about what I got. What can I do from Monday? through Friday to play great on Saturday. Matter of fact, Sunday through Friday to play great on Saturday. What do you think of Coach Pittman? And I'll give you, I'll give you a more specific question. What, what, do, do you sometimes go like, who, who is this guy? <laughs> like, Cause he's not, he's not everybody. Yeah, he's not your typical. He, he's a little different. Yeah. In a, he, in a good way to me. Yeah, a great way. His, 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 it's like his, um, his emotions is very like great. Like he make you, he'll make you smile every day. You know, if you're having a bad day, he come joke with you. Make sure you having, a, you know, see if he can bring your day up. You know, you always want to coach like that. You know, that's always he's actually for his players. He's for his coaches. Like he'll do anything for the team. And that's the type of head coach you want. You don't just want a coach that's just gonna say, "I'm the head coach for University of Arkansas." You know, he actually cares. You know, he he. I'm pretty sure I know for a fact he wouldn't trade for anybody. So that's I love him as a coach, and he's just a great guy to be around. What do you think about the locker room and the kind of culture you have? It's fun, it's fun, it's fun. The training room fun, the locker room fun, just practice fun. This might be the most fun we had at the practice whole week. Like this whole week of practice, it was just and everything was just high. It was just very, really fun. Like a good energy. A great energy, a great energy through throughout everybody. Coaches wise, player wise, trainer wise, just everything. When your time at Arkansas is done, how do you hope Razorback fans will remember you? I just wanted to remember me as just a great person. Outside of football, mm -hmm. just I'm a great person, you know, fun to be around, just fun to talk to and just be like, I wanna be that type of dude where they 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 say, We bored. Let's go talk to Drew. 